Okay, it looks like everyone's come to here. Have a seat. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Uh, let's greet to one another. Welcome Friday service. Welcome Friday service. Welcome Friday service. Welcome, welcome. You guys did the dinner? So what kind what kind of food you ate? Pizza and fries, tenjang chige, hamburg steak, right? Ah. All right. How about the David? Rice and dumpling. All right. What kind of dumpling? Pork or beef? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So actually, I really like the dumpling made by, do you know bibigo? The same thing? Bibigo. It's really good. It's sell by Costco? Yeah, Costco. And you try. Bibigo. Company name, that is company name, but it's really good. 거기서 나온 건데 되게 맛있어. 거기 되게 많아. 그 포크도 있고, 비프도 있고, 슈림프도 있고. Andrew, did you eat the bibigo? Dumpling? No, no, you don't think so? All right, gotcha. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. <웃음> 누구 거야? 아빠 거야? 오, oh, all right. 저거야, 저거. Oh, thank you. You, you bring the for us? And then, yeah? <laughs> oh. No case, huh? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let me pray. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for giving the beautiful day. We gather to worship you. Uh, we, can, we come to be for you. Uh, through this time, we want to know you more than before. We have one desire. Uh, we want to build up the, my faith, our the faith, uh, the working with you. Uh, today, we, we get the title is Vision Seminar. Uh, please give us the wisdom. Please teach us what is the good way for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, today, uh, today concept is, as you know, the vision seminar, right? So, uh, vision seminar is a great opportunity to, to meet the various job and to think which job is right for me, right for us. And then the, what am I interested in? So if I have, a, if I, if I have a, the same an opportunity as a, as a children, as a youth, I think it would be really been the great. So uh, today's speaker is Lee Hee-su Jipsa-nim. Jipsa-nim, how do you pronounce it? Sue Lee. Sue Lee Jipsa-nim. So she is really, she is always the best for us to help us in youth ministry. And I'm really grateful. And she's already in the same place and always help, help us. So she worked, worked for many years as, as the Lauders in North American CRM manager. And it will be a great opportunity to hear her to how we uh, and were there. Uh, so when uh, she's come here, so let's welcome it with apology, okay? Hatsu. Thank you, Pastor Sean, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Hey, thank you so much for joining me in person or um, in Zoom. And there are so many of you here that I didn't, I didn't expect this much turnout, so it's great. Um, we're going to have a Q&A at the end, so hold your questions, um, okay, and we'll get started. So I have a question for you. How many of you know exactly what kind of career you want? You already have a career, Ben Teacher. 
Okay, except the, um, if you already have a career, then don't answer this question. But if you don't, how many of you know exactly what kind of career you want? Nobody? Okay, that's perfect. Because that's what I'm going to talk about, how to find your career interests. So you are in the right place. So a mathematician once said, there are, only, there are really only four numbers in the world. Anyone want to guess? One, two, three, four. four. You sure? Seven, five, eight, too many. Four just seems like too much to hold in one's memory, right? So I'm going to talk about just three things. First, my career. What do I do for a living? Second, my path. How did I end up here? And three, some helpful tips to help you find your own career interest. OK, my career. So I work for a company called Estee Lauder Companies. And I lead CRM and consumer analytics for North America. And I'll explain what it is in a minute. So most people, when I say, oh, I work for Estee Lauder Companies, they think of this. Anyone recognize what this is? David, right? It's a famous um, serum by Estee Lauder um, brand. But actually, did you know Estee Lauder companies has over 25 brands, some of which you may recognize. We have La Mer, MAC, Clinique, uh, Bobby Brown, Smashbox, Too Faced, Tom Ford, Origins, Joe Malone London, Glam Glow, um, Dr. Jart, Frederick Mall, Bumble and Bumble. So we have a lot of brands, all these brands. Okay. So what exactly is CRM? CRM represents customer relationship management. So now I'll go into details. So brace yourself. I'm gonna throw a lot of information at you. Okay, try to, to try to stay awake. Again, this is the USS Montana requesting that you immediately divert your course 15 degrees to the north to avoid a collision. Over. Please divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid collision. This is Captain Hancock. You will divert your course. Over. Negative, Captain. I'm not moving anything. Change your course. Over. So, this is the USS Montana, the second largest vessel in the North Atlantic fleet. You will change course 15 degrees north, or I will be forced to take measures to ensure the safety of this ship. Over. This is a lighthouse, mate. It's your call. Hello? Okay. So that was a lot of information. Did you guys all get that? Huh? So my job is um, helping naval ships avoid crashing into the lighthouse? No. Actually, my job is to help companies understand who their customers are so they can target the right consumers with the right message at the right time. CRM helps brands understand who their customers are. So how do we do that exactly? So every time you make a purchase in store, online, or on your phone, we collect information about your purchase. What you're buying, how many items you're buying, how much you're paying for it, whether you're buying it on discount or you're paying full price, what store you bought it from, all of those information we collect. And we gather that data. 
we transform it in a way that's useful to us in a database. It's called Customer Data Platform, CDP. Okay? So that gives a 360 view of our customers. And we also append um, other useful attributes about consumers, like your age, gender, household income, occupation, anything that we can um, get our hands on within the legal um, constraints. And then CDP is always, you know, it's like a living and breathing thing because it's being updated in real time. So what we do is we create a data warehouse that's replicated on a daily basis or weekly basis. Um, and then we use that data warehouse, the data in the data warehouse to do things like reporting, data mining, and campaign management. So in summary, customer relationship management is both the technology and the strategy to manage and analyze customer interactions and data throughout the customer's life cycle. OK, now I'll talk about my path. I, I don't know if you can see it, but I um, graduated from Cornell University. I, studied, I majored in economics. And then my first job out of college was with SMP Global. And then I moved to Citibank, where I started as an analyst, and I was promoted to senior analyst. And after that, I moved to Ralph Lauren. And at Ralph Lauren, I got promoted three times in less than seven years. And I then moved to Ann Inc., and then Brooks Brothers, so a lot of apparel companies. I ended up buying a lot of clothes for my kids and my husband. And then now I work for Estee Lauder companies. So I stopped buying clothes. Now I buy cosmetics. OK. Sorry, I clicked too early. <laughs> what I meant to say is, if you look at my career path, it looks like I had a very smooth path, you know, nice progression of career. But that wasn't the case. The path was very bumpy. When I was at Cornell, I suffered from the biggest imposter syndrome because you know, I had come from Korea just three years before, and I couldn't really speak English very well. And it was you know, almost a miracle that I made to Cornell. So when I got there, I felt like I didn't belong there, and everybody else was smarter than me. You know, they come from a rich family, they have good I kind of forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Anyways, so I felt like I, I was nobody. And I, I felt like I didn't belong at Cornell. So that was not fun. And when I graduated, I had such a difficult time finding a job. I submitted maybe thousands of resumes. And I heard back from maybe three companies for an interview. right? And every time I went for an interview, I froze because I was so nervous. and. I, I was self-conscious of my English, and I, I messed up big time. So, um, and then at SMP, I got laid off in less than a year, I think in eight months. So it was not my choice. I wasn't very proactive in the choices that I made. The choices happened to me. Right. Same thing, when I was at N Inc, I was there for three years. And one day, I was told that my department was eliminated. So that's why I had to find another job. And luckily, I ended up at Brooks Brothers and now at S. A. Lauder. So the point is, during your career path, you're going to run into some bumps. You're going to run into some obstacles. And just expect that. You know, that happens to everybody. OK, but what's important is to have a destination, to have an idea of where you want to end up, right? So it's like having a GPS and entering your, your destination, right? Once you enter your destination in GPS, it's going to give you an idea of, OK, where I need to turn right, where I need to turn left, where I need to make a U-turn, right? 
if you don't enter the destination in GPS, you have no plan. You don't know where to go, right? So having a destination is, is key to getting to your destination. Because even if you don't get to the destination you had, you, you, know, you originally had in your mind, you're gonna end up somewhere very close to that destination. But imagine if you don't have any destination, what are the chances that you're gonna get there? Zero percent. So now I wanna talk to you about some health, helpful tips so that you can find your career interest. Number one, write down your interest and strength. So take out a piece of paper, start writing down, and you don't have to think too much. You know, just write down as things come to your mind. What do you like doing, right? And then also talk, uh, think about what you're good at. Because sometimes what you like to do is not the things that you're good at. So you want to find out the things that you like and also the things that you are good at, that intersection. Because that's a good potential for your career interest. Okay. Number two, write down the things that people often ask you for help. You know, after you write down your what you're good at, what you like doing, and you still have no idea, you know, what you're good at really, then you know, think about when people come to you for help, what do they usually come to you for? Do they ask you with math problems or do they ask you to, I don't know, proofread something? There are some things that people ask you for, uh, come to you for, right? So those are likely to be your strength. Number three, okay, at this stage, you still have no idea. Then you can ask your friends, family, and teachers, what do you think I'm good at? Just ask that, right? Because sometimes your family, friends, and teachers, the people around you know you better than you know yourself. Okay, take, there's a um, ton of free online personality tests. You can just Google free online personality tests. And this one is uh, something I have taken before, 16 personalities. It's free, it's very easy, and it gives you a, a detailed report of what your strengths are and what kind of careers are um, best for you, okay? Anyone notice that I, that, you know, I, this is the number one? I didn't want to give you too much information, so I went from one to three and then back to one. Okay. I'll stop the, I, I'll stop with my uncle jokes. All right. Now I end, and um, I want to end my presentation with a gift for you. There are a ton of free or affordable online courses to really validate your career interest or to deepen your career interest. So things like edx.org or coursera.org, anybody heard of these uh, online learning platforms where you can take college courses? Okay. So you can take it for free or you know, if you choose the paid version, then you get a certificate. My recommendation is don't pay for it, just take it for free because you may not like it. Um, then you can just stop taking and take that course and take another course. And you know, nobody's gonna know that you, you know, quit a course. You know, it's, it's, you know, they don't send your um, scores to colleges or anything like that. Okay. And there is like, you know, free certificate programs. You can uh, learn Google Analytics and learn Google Analytics IQ certificate for free. It's pretty easy. Um, there is a Google Digital Garage where, garage where you can learn um, digital marketing and earn digital certificates. You know, obviously, if you're not into digital marketing, you know, you don't have to consider these resources. But my point is, nowadays, 
if there is something that you're interested, all you need to do is Google, right? Put <laughs> free, you know, I don't know, what do you want to learn? Um, I don't know, how to, how to sing better, uh, you know, anything. Like, you can Google it, and pretty much there are tons of resources you can take. Uh, lastly, if you're into coding, you can check out data camps. You can learn Python, R, SQL, and Tableau, and many other uh, programming languages. Okay, so I've given you a lot of information tonight, but whether you do anything with this information is your own decision. So I'm gonna end with my favorite quote. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. If you want to get ahead, then you have to get started. So that's what makes the difference between people who get ahead and people who don't. Because people who don't get ahead usually never even get started. Thank you.